this is Stonecourt Export and today we're testing five different CPUs in five different demos to see which one you should get. I tested two Intel CPUs and three AMD CPUs. The two Intel CPUs were the 10600K and the 11400, while the three AMD CPUs, those were the Ryzen R5 1600. It's a bit uh, old these days, but it's still decent. The R5 5600X and the R5 3600, the previous value champ before the 11400. Uh, the AMD CPUs, those were tested on the ASRock B4, B550M Pro 4. And this is a good motherboard that I've done a review on. It's a great board for a great price and I do highly recommend it. I've had no issues with it while I've had it. And uh, yeah, it's a great board. Great board. The Intel CPUs, those were tested on the Gigabyte C490 Elite AC. And uh, yeah, it's also a good board. I've done a review on it, but of course, if you're buying new today, you'll probably be looking at C590 and not 490. All these CPUs were tested with 32 gigabytes of DDR4 memory running at 3600 at CL18. So that's 80, 90, 90, and 38. I used four sticks of eight gigabyte memory modules. So they are running in dual rank. And the 1600, that doesn't have the best memory controller in the world. So on this CPU, I did have to downclock the memory to 2933 to get it to boot. And then I tightened the timings up to CL16 to uh, try to get a bit, bit of performance back. But uh, I didn't go any further than that. The Intel i5-11400, that was tested with its stock cooler. And it's a de decent cooler, it's not great, it's like the rate stealth, it's only okay. But if you keep the TDP at stock uh, values, you should be fine with the stock cooler. If you do uh, increase the TDP values, the stock cooler will not be sufficient. The 10600K, that was cooled with a Cooler Master Hyper 2 on 2 Black Edition. And with this CPU, we did have multi-core enhancement enabled. So the, uh, what that does is basically it runs all the cores at maximum boost frequency. So that's 4.8 gigahertz for this thing. And uh, yeah, it shouldn't really make too much of a difference because MMOs are pretty much single threaded anyway, most of them anyway. So yeah, that's that. Uh, the 5600X and the 3600, these two were uh, ran at uh, stock settings. So no auto OC or precision boot overdrive stock settings and those uh, were cool along with the 1600 was cooled with the rate spire so this is the rate spire that actually came with the uh, r5 1600 but you should should be fine i mean i don't expect it to be a big difference between the performance in an mmo with this uh, cooler and the rate stealth so it should be fine and it should be representative of what you can expect the GPU I used, that was the AMD Radeon RX 6800, which should be more than enough for these MMOs, as most of them are a few years old already. And I tested that two resolutions, 1080p, which is the most common resolution, along with 1440p ultrawide, so that's 3440 by 1440. You can see, you will see, when we get to the numbers, you will see why I didn't test any more resolutions. I didn't really find it necessary. I could even probably would have been enough with 1080p, but anyway. Yeah, so without further ado, let's just get into the numbers. The first game out is Elder Scrolls Online. This game recently received a multi-threaded update. However, my testing was prior to update 31, and it's a beta feature anyway, so it shouldn't make too much of a difference. At 1080p, the 5600X leads the charge with a healthy 22% lead over second place, which happens to be an other Ryzen CPU, namely the R5 3600. The R5 3600 edged out both Intel CPUs, but there's not a huge uh, difference between the three at 1080p. The R5 1600 is trailing the Intel 11400 by 35%. In this case, that does mean the difference between 60 frames per second on average and less. If we move on to 3440 by 1440 here, the 5600X retains its lead, which is not all that surprising. And the R5 3600 is 5% ahead of the 10600K, which is slightly ahead of the 11400. Again, the R5 1600 is trailing the Intel CPUs by quite a bit. Moving on to Final Fantasy XIV, here once again the R5 5600X is coming out in front. It's a smaller 9% lead over the R5 3600 which came in second place, 
Both Intel CPUs perform on par with each other and let's be honest, they're basically on par with the R5 3600. AMD has outliers on both ends of the scale, but the R5 5600 was the best performer and the R5 1600 was the worst. The 11400 is 36% faster than the R5 1600 here. Moving up to 3440 by 1440 we can see that the performance is lower for all CPUs but there's no major changes here. Next up then is Guild Wars 2, here the Intel i5-11400 is coming out ahead, being essentially on par with the R5-5600X, or 1.5% ahead, which is uh, within margin of error. The 10600K is still in second place here, coming in 19% ahead of the R5-3600, which itself is about 40% ahead of the R5-1600, although all CPUs here deliver a playable experience. At 3440x1440, 30 the 11400 is still edging out the 5600X, with the 10600K in 3rd and the R5 3600 in 4th place. Moving on to the Lord of the Rings Online, this game is a game that Intel CPUs really shine in. The 11400 is 14% faster than the 5600X there, and even the 10600K is edging out the 5600X. The 5600X is 17% faster than the R5 3600, which again is almost 40% faster than the R5 1600. At 3440x1440 1440 things remain pretty much the same, but with smaller deltas between the top performing CPUs. World of Warcraft is a game that appears to have been pretty well optimized. It's the only one running DirectX 12 and we tested with max settings and ray tracing on. Here are the results, the 5600X is coming out on top, slightly ahead of the 11400 and 10600K which both performed really well here. The 10600K is the slower of the two and it was 20% faster than the R5 3600. The 3600 is still delivering good performance and the same can be said of the R5 1600 even though it's in last place. At 3440x1440 things changed a bit. For some reason the R5 5600X is down to 3rd from 1st. It's not a major difference, but the Intel CPUs are a bit ahead here at 3440x1440. So, as you probably could tell from all that, the Ryzen R5 5600X is the best gaming CPU for MMOs, and it's probably the best gaming CPU full stop, but in this test we only tested MMOs. And uh, it's it's only problem is the price. It's two hundred and seventy two dollars at PC Part Picker at the time of recording, which it's it's a bit expensive in my opinion anyway for what it is. So personally, I'd rather go with the i five eleven four hundred if you're building a new rig dedicated to MMOs or gaming in general. This is a great CPU at a great price, and I do highly recommend it. Uh, you can save a few more bucks if you go for the 11400F because that comes without an iGPU and I have tested the iGPU in this thing and it's it's not great so going with 11400F if it should be fine. The iGPU you can't really do much with it anyway apart from some troubleshooting. But yeah that's uh, that's what I would choose and uh, the 10600K it's, it's, it's okay if you get a good sample that can overclock you could probably surpass the 11400, but uh, my sample is pretty poor, so 4.9 gigahertz, 5 gigahertz, that's pretty much it for this thing, and yeah, I'll do, I'll rather use the 11400 and a lower power consumption uh, than uh, uh, struggle with the power draw of the 10600K while overclocked. So there you have it, the 11400 is the Valor Champ, and the 5600X is the, well, champion full stop so that's the performance champion but personally I think the 11400 is a better value and a better buy because you do get 95% of the performance for like 60% of the price or something like that and that's pretty much it for now thank you so much for watching and uh, farewell